what are all the different ways that climate change is impacting the ocean right now? So, I mean, one of the main ones, obviously, is that as the planet's warming, the ocean is absorbing a lot of extra energy, like 93% of all that extra heat being trapped by greenhouse gases is going into the ocean, right? So we know the ocean is warming. The ocean's also rising. And some of that's because we're melting ice on land, but it's also just because warmer water is less dense and expands. And so that's causing sea level rise as well. Okay, hold that thought. This is an art installation under the Canby Bridge, but it's also based on the latest science from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change for sea level projections. So if we were to see the majority of the ice around the world melt and the waters warm as a result of climate change, we could be looking at a four to six meter sea level rise globally. Here in False Creek, they're taking a middle of the road scenario. This is five meters, a five meter sea level ride if we see the tipping point of our ice sheets around the world melt. Now, we're already seeing the impacts of climate change. And in fact, here in Vancouver, by 2050, a 50 centimeter sea level rise. Now, that might not look like much, but we get glimpses into this future every time we get a storm surge or a king tide that pushes water levels up 50 centimeters and we see our infrastructure destroyed. Based on a middle of the road scenario, we're talking a one meter rise globally by 2100 and double that by 2200. So you got te temperature warming, you got sea level rise. We also have the ocean is losing oxygen. And when you have warmer water at the surface, it means there's a big difference in density between that surface water and the deep water, and the two don't mix very well. And so oxygen that normally would diffuse out of the atmosphere and mix into the deep ocean can't get there. What does that, those oxygen changes mean for marine life? When you have low oxygen, oxygen levels in, in water, particularly in the deep waters, really fish can't survive. And the other one is the ocean is becoming more more acidic basically and it's all it's because of the direct effects of carbon dioxide so you don't even need the climate to change for this mm -hmm. to happen it literally is from us putting more carbon dioxide in the air some of that carbon dioxide dissolves into the water changes the chemistry of the ocean and leads uh, to the water becoming a little bit more on the acidic end of the range there's all these organisms in the ocean that, that need uh, a certain balance of carbon chemicals to build their skeleton rabbit hole time so this cup of ocean water probably contains between 75 and 100 million phytoplankton, all just photosynthesizing, turning CO2 into oxygen. These are our phytoplankton. The phytoplankton get eaten by the cinnamon bun center, AKA zooplankton, and they're just going to town on the phytoplankton at all times, just stuffing themselves with carbon. The zooplankton then get eaten by bigger fish. So the carbon is traveling up the food chain. All right, here you go, eat your zooplankton. Okay, the fish then gets eaten by a bigger marine animal, like a whale. For these purposes, I'd like to be a humpback whale. I'm going to eat a giant carbon stuffed fish. It's good carbon. Mm. Now, if any one of us dies, the carbon in our bodies will float down to the ocean floor. That's called marine snow. And it gets buried under the ocean dirt where that carbon remains trapped for millions of years. Oh. If a whale dies, it's a big deal. It's called a whale fall. The whale body is just full of carbon and it takes that carbon from the upper levels of the ocean all the way down to the bottom of the seafloor. We're up to 60 different species, then have those nutrients and that carbon in places where they normally wouldn't get it. This is why scientists say whales are a vital part of marine life. 